Okay, uh, thank you, Faizan. I uh, appreciate uh, Good evening and a warm welcome to all the participants. Uh, we can get started with providing the context on the environment that we operated in the quarter, so that gives the backdrop of uh, what was going on. Uh, much of this quarter has been about inflation and price surges, as you know. Energy and fuel have been at the center. Supply chains have been disrupted, which created a major demand and supply gap. As we progress further in the year, we will keep a careful watch on the development. We see opportunities in the marketplace in the current environment, uh, supported by dynamic fiscal and monetary policy. Activity indicators released during April to June quarter indicate that economic activity continues to hold up well despite global risk. GST collections, manufacturing, PMI, IIP, credit, rail freight, services, PMI, etc., etc., show robustness and opportunities in the economy. The RBA raised the policy rate by 90 basis points in the quarter, taking the repo rate to 4.9. The Monetary Policy Committee also voted to remain focused on withdrawal of accommodation in a calibrated fashion to ensure inflation remains within the RBA's upper band while supporting growth. Accordingly, they have responded with appropriate lending rate increases. Now let's start. Let's, let's go through. Let, let's talk about the five themes at a high level uh, uh, now. On the distribution expansion, that's the first thing. We added 36 branches during the quarter, and 250 more are in various stages of readiness to be rolled out. Uh, we have 15,618 business correspondents, an increase of 277 over prior quarter. Gold loans are now processed at just over 2,000 branches, as against 1,340 branches in the prior quarter. It is well on the way to be a product offering in most of our branches. Payment acceptance points have grown to 3.2 million, a year-on-year -year growth of 42%. Wealth management is now offered in 357 locations through Hub and Spoke model. We have expanded to 141 new locations in the quarter. This is in accordance with our plan to take this to deeper geographies in over 900 locations in the current financial year. Uh, in commercial and rural banking, SME is now offered in 640 districts in our drive to expand the SME market share. Uh, next, on, uh, let's talk about a few comments on the customer franchise building. Uh, during the quarter, we added 10,900 plus people and uh, 29,000 people over the year, over the past 12 months. Our people have acquired 2.6 million new liability relationships in the quarter, exhibiting a phenomenal growth of 59% over the same time last year and 10% over prior quarter. They've also acquired 1.9 lakh MSE accounts in the quarter. On cards, we have issued 1.2 million new cards during the quarter, highest ever with a 47% growth over prior quarter. Total cards, cards base now stand at 17.6 million. Moving on to next, our focus on the granular deposit. Deposits at 16 lakhs 4,000 crores increased by approximately 46,000 crores in the quarter, as against an addition of approximately 11,000 crores in last year's June quarter. Deposits reflected a year-on-year -year growth of 19.2%. Retail deposits increased by approximately 50,000 crores in the quarter, up 19% year-on-year and 3.9% sequentially. Casa deposits recorded a strong growth of 20% year-on-year, ending the quarter at 7,34,000 crores, with a Casa ratio at 45.8%. Term deposit grew by 18.5% year-on-year, ending the quarter at 8,70,000 crores. Uh, next, moving on to advances. Total advances were 13,95,000 crores. Growth of sell-downs, we grew 22.5% year-on-year. Our retail advances growth continued during the quarter as well. Retail advances grew 21.7% year-on-year and 4.9% quarter-on-quarter. Excluding auto and, and also two-wheeler, uh, low loans which faced supply chain disruptions during the quarter, the year-on-year -year retail growth, excluding these two, were 25%. Card spends have grown by 24% over prior quarter. Payment business advances, payment business loans, has grown 27% over prior year and 4.4% over prior quarter. The bank has a market share of 22.4% in cards, 48.9% in card receivables, 27.7% in card spends, and 47% in merchant acquiring volumes. Commercial and rural banking, which drives our MSME and PSL book, continues momentum with a year-on-year -year growth of 28.9%. In the wholesale segment, 
with the rates dislocation, we let go assets aggregating to 40 to 50,000 crores. Uh, despite that, the book grew 15.7% year on year. And lastly, on technology and digital. As promised, the bank commenced digital launches to, in, to enable smooth customer experience. MyCards, which is a microservices architecture that is stateless and deployed on cloud, making it highly scalable. This has emerged as a preferred service tool for our customers with a simplified login and self-service features. We now have, our, have over 2 million registered card users, a growth of 1 million over prior quarter. We had 33 million customer service addressed digitally during the quarter on this platform. Uh, this microservices architecture design principle uh, de-risks and removes clutter on our digital platform and enhances customer service. Uh, Express Auto Loans is an end-to-end -end digital service uh, which enables instant and hassle-free car loan disbursals for existing and new to bank customers. 60% of our loan decisioning through this service are processed in less than five minutes uh, with disbursals taking less than 30 minutes. Uh, within a month of launch, Express Auto Loans volumes has already reached more than 5% of our new car loan volume. HTLC Bank One, our customer experience hub, has been launched recently on multiple channels, email, social care, SMS, and WhatsApp, and enhances our customer relationship management using AIML and conversational bug, enabling round-the-clock self-service capabilities akin to human interaction. We are continuously adding features to our smart hub, Wrapper app, and see a significant increase in its adoption across our customer base. We now have more than 1.15 million customers since its launch onboarded on this platform. In Q2, that is the current running quarter, July to September, we are poised to launch further digital initiatives such as PayZap 2.0, uh, customer onboarding journeys across more products such as FD, PL, balance transfer, EMI, etc., implementing customer experience up across additional service and sales channels such as phone banking and telesales. For enhanced customer service and relationship management, we continue to work on developing uh, applications uh, for an for Q3 implementation, for instance, build app, revamping net banking, revamping corporate net banking, and launch of new mobile uh, banking app in Q4. In, in Q1, we received a total of 231 million visits on our website, averaging 28 plus million unique customers per month, uh, which is a year-on-year -year growth of about 20%. Uh, business growth continued to gain momentum across diverse products and segments, driven through relationship management and enhanced digital offering. Balance sheet remains resilient. Average LCR for the quarter was at 108% and was at 120% as a June quarter. Capital adequacy ratio is at 18.1% with CET1 at 16.5%, including profits for the current quarter. Let's start with net revenues. Core net revenues were at rupees 27,181 crore, excluding trading and mark-to-market losses, which grew by 19.8% over prior year and 2.4% over prior quarter. Driven by advances growth of 22.5%, deposit growth of 19.2%, and total balance sheet growth of 20.3%. Net interest income for the quarter, at which is 19,481 crore, grew by 13.5% over prior year and 3.2% over prior quarter. The core net interest margin was at 4, based 4.0, based on interest earning assets, the net interest margin was at 4.2%. Moving on to details of other income, uh, first, fees and commission income was at rupees 5,360 crore and grew by 38% over prior year and were lower 4.8% over prior quarter after seasonally strong fourth quarter. Retail constitutes approximately 92% of fees. Effects and derivatives income at rupees 1,259 crore was higher by 5% compared to prior year. Trading and mark-to-market losses were 1,312 crore, primarily owing to spike in benchmark bond deals witnessed during the quarter. The mark-to-market losses come from our EFS, HFT, and Government of India Securities, corporate bonds, and, and pass-through certificates. Prior quarter was a negative 40, and prior year was a gain of 600 crores. Other miscellaneous income of 1,080 crores includes recoveries from return-off accounts and dividends from subsidiaries. Excluding trading and mark-to-market losses, total other income at 7,700 crore grew by 35% over prior year. Operating expenses for the quarter were at 10,502 crore, an increase of 
28.7 percent over prior year. This was a low base of prior year COVID wave two impacted quarter and increased by 3.4 percent over prior quarter. We added 725 branches and 2,329 ATMs since last year, taking the total network strength to 6,378 branches, 18,620 ATMs, and 15,294 business correspondence managed by common service centers. Core cost to income ratio for the quarter, excluding trading and mark to market losses, was at 38.6 percent. Moving on to PPOP, our earnings trajectory improved with continued retail growth. Our core PPOP grew 14.7 percent year on year and 1.7 percent sequentially. Our pre-provision operating profit was at 15,368. Uh, coming to asset quality, the GNP ratio was at 1.2 percent as compared to 1.4 percent prior year. Out of the 1.2 percent to 8 percent, about 18 basis points are standard, thus the core GNP ratio is 1.1. However, these are included by us in NPA as one of the other facilities. Of the borrower is an NPA, but we'll talk about 1.28. We'll have to anchor with that. Uh, as you have seen in the past several years, agricultural segment has a seasonal impact in June and December cycle. GNP ratio, excluding NPAs in agricultural segment and and a one-off, was at 1.03 percent. Prior year was at 1.26 percent, and prior quarter was at 1.01 percent. In net NPA ratio was at 0.35 percent. Prior year was at 0.48 percent. The preceding quarter was at 0.32 percent. The, the slippage ratio for the current quarter is at 0.5 percent, which is 7,200 crore. Excluding the seasonal agri and one-off slippage, the slippage in the current quarter was approximately 38 basis points, call it 0.4 percent. During the quarter, recoveries and upgrades were approximately 3,000 crores, or 22 basis points. Write-offs in the quarter were 2,400 crores, or approximately 17 basis points. There were no sale of, of stressed or written-off accounts in the quarter. The check-bound rates across the products in June continues to remain lower than the pre-COVID levels for almost all of the retail products. The restructuring under the RBA resolution framework for COVID-19 as of June end stands at 76 basis points, 10,750 crores. In addition, certain facilities of the same borrower. Which are not restructured is approximately 13 basis points or 1,800 850 crores. Uh, that, that totals to 89 uh, basis points. Provisions reported were around 3,200 crore, as against 4,800 crore for the prior year and 3,300 crores during the prior quarter. The provision coverage ratio was at 73 percent. There are no technical write-offs. Uh, our offices and branch books are fully integrated. At the end of current quarter, contingent provisions and floating provisions remained close to prior quarter at 11,100 crores. General provisions were 6,500 crores. Total provisions comprising specific floating, gen, contingent, and general provisions were about 170 percent of gross non-performing loans. This is in addition to the securities held as collateral in several of the cases. Floating, contingent, and general provisions were about 1.25 percent of gross advances as of June quarter end. Now coming to credit cost ratios. The total annualized credit cost for the quarter was at 91 basis points. Prior year was at 167 basis points. Prior quarter was at 96 basis points. Recoveries, which are recorded as miscellaneous income, amount to 23 basis points of gross advances for the quarter, as against 14 basis points in prior year and 26 basis points for prior quarter. Total credit cost ratio net of recoveries was at 68 basis points, compared to 1.53 percent in prior year and 70 basis points in prior quarter. The reported, <clears throat> the reported uh, PBT at 12,180 crore grew by 18 percent over prior year. Net profit after tax for the quarter at rupees 9,196 crore. After factoring in the trading and mark to mark losses of 1,312 crore in the quarter, grew by 19 percent uh, over prior year. That is, uh, after taking the charge for 1,112 crore, grew by 19 percent. Now some highlights on HDBFS uh, on an India's basis. Uh, HDBFS opened 29 branches in the quarter, taking it to 1,403 branches spread across 1,000, more than 1,000 cities, 1,008 cities and towns. Uh, branch addition continues to supplement the digital investments. Customer base grew to 9.8 million with 7.7 percent additions during the quarter and an increase of 35 percent over prior year. 
the uptick in disbursements in March quarter was sustained in the quarter ended June 2022 at 9,000 crores. Though disbursements in Q1, disbursements in Q1 are traditionally lower as compared to March quarter. Uh, this disbursements reflect the growth of 130% year on year. The total loan book as on June end stood at 61,814 crores. Secured loans comprising 76% of the total loan book. Net revenue for the quarter ended June 30 was at is 1, 000, 000, uh, was at 2,194 crores, growth of 13% over prior year and 2.4% sequentially. Cost to in net income uh, for the lending business was at 37%. Provisions and contingencies for the quarter were at 398 crores as against 422 crores for prior quarter and 870 crores for quarter ended last year same time. Stage 3 as of June end stood at 4.95% after factoring in 1.18% impact of new RBA guidelines issued in November, reflecting sustained healthy collections. The TCR on secured and unsecured books stood at 48% and 92% respectively. Profit after tax for the quarter end of June was 441 crore as against 89 crore for last year's same period. Earnings per share was 5 5.58 and book value per share was at 125. The company remains well capitalized with a capital adequacy ratio of 20% and well positioned to sustain improvement in disbursements across segments and growth. HSL, uh, HCFC Securities Limited, has a wide network of 216 branches across 147 cities and towns in the country. HSL has increased its overall client base to 3.99 million customers as of June end, an increase of 41% over prior year. The total reported revenue for the quarter was at 432 crores as against 456 crores in prior year. Net profit after tax was at 189 crores against 251 crores for prior year. Earnings per share in the quarter was 119.5 and book value per share was at 1061. In summary, over 152,000 employees across the bank dedicated their tireless service to focus the customer engagement, product delivery and service, providing higher standards of banking experience, which results in the quarter's number of advances growth of 22%, Deposits growth of 19%, core operating profit excluding the bond losses of 14.7%, delivering a consistent profit after tax growth of 19% after factoring in the bond losses of the 1,312 that I alluded to earlier. Uh, again, from a return on asset point of view, 1.8%, excluding the impact of the trading and mark to market, it's slightly over 2%, with an ROE of 17%. Earnings per share reported in the quarter is at 16.6, rupees 16.6. Book value per share increased in the quarter by, book value per share increased in the quarter to 450.6. Uh, with that, uh, can I request uh, Kaizen to open up the line for questions, please? Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to limit their questions up to two per participant. If time permits, you may join the queue for any follow-up. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Maruk Adajania from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. So, uh, my first question Hello? Yeah, can you hear? Can you hear this yes. okay now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, go ahead, yeah. So, yes, sir. My uh, first question is uh, uh, on your CRB loans, of course, the QOQ growth excluding Agri has been good at 4%. However, we've been talking about doubling the book in three years. So that would probably require a higher run rate of growth. So how do you the uh, how do you see the outlook panning out for growth in CRB? Uh, and also, if you could throw some color on, you said that you probably gave up some corporate loan growth in the commentary. So what was that about? Um, uh, that's my first question. Then I have two more. Okay. First, let's talk about the uh, CRB loans that you talked about. Uh, 
The CRB loans had a robust growth of, call it 28-29% year-on-year in the quarter. Right? Uh, and we do have aggressive plans across various segments in CRB, uh, both on the MSME side uh, as well as on the agri side, right? on both sides that uh, we have a significant plan to grow. Uh, this growth, uh, I think we talked about it maybe a month ago in another forum, that, uh, that growth is uh, predicated on uh, one, uh, geographic expansion. Uh, we want to be present in more districts in the country uh, to be able to capture the supply chain and the distribution chain flows. Right? Uh, that's part of what we are trying to do, to be present everywhere so that we capture all of the chain, uh, distribution chain, supply chain, right? not just a part of it that we work with various other uh, wholesale clients. We are able to capture in wholesome, not, not part. Uh, so that is part of what we are doing. The second aspect of that is also in terms of uh, agree, uh, again, physical uh, distribution expansion, uh, moving moving from about one lakh villages that uh, that we do today. Uh, as a step, we want to go to close to two lakh villages. Right? That's again part of how we want to operate uh, and uh, get to. There are enough opportunities. Uh, we, we see that they're good and. Uh, that can come only by where we put our sales people, we put our relationship people in the local place where the uh, customer is, right? That is part of the distribution. Uh, the second thing is the relationship management, right? Which is, in addition to having a physical, we also want to have uh, our relationship management because most of the CRB is about relationship management. And uh, we are expanding more, adding more people into that so that we could get the right kind of a relationship to have that, uh, uh, both from acquiring customers as well as broad-basing uh, the products that we could uh, deliver to them. Uh, yes, so we are confident that that segment is poised for uh, growth. Uh, and uh, again, we are not talking about it in isolation, right? This is going to ride on the country's macro growth, right? Uh, that means uh, we need the tailwind of the country growth also to be going up. Uh, and uh, with the MSME, uh, being almost a third of the GDP uh, participation, uh, that is where we, we tend to we are focused on doing that. And from a market penetration point of view, again, I think we told you how that growth is going to come from last time somewhere we talked, which is um, we, we have uh, only about 20 to 25 percent uh, penetrated in the banking system itself. So, so the rest of them are outside of the banking system. They need to move in here. Uh, and this is part of our uh, both physical as well as the RM expansion strategy is to capture them uh, and bring them into the banking system. On the CBG, on the, on the wholesale loans, you alluded to something which I didn't get. Uh, what was the question on the wholesale? No, you said that, you know, 40 to 50, is, or maybe I heard it wrong. You said 40 oh, to 50,000 okay. crore was given up because of competitive rates or something uh, like that. Very, very good. Good point. Yes, I did I did mention that, and I specifically mentioned that uh, so that I know that you will pick it up and ask, uh, which is, uh, I think there was a rate dislocation uh, in the quarter. Sometime around starting May, right, with the rate started to move up, there was a rate dislocation. Uh, immediately after, um, our bank and so also others started to move up on the rates, right? uh, and we did that. And as we move up on the, on the rates, there were uh, some customers who were uh, offered lower rates by certain other uh, market participants, and uh, we, we do not want to cut back on our rates to keep them. Right? We said that's fine because we do have a relationship. It's, uh, we do continue to have a relationship with those customers, the 40, 50,000, who went and took, we continue to have, except that we didn't uh, endeavor by price uh, to keep increasing those shares, right? So we said that's fine to let go, so let somebody else can take it at a lower price than where we do. And uh, that, that is what I alluded to. Okay, and so was that PSU banks or private banks? I, broadly, it was across everywhere, so like, I'm not going into the details, but just okay, okay. across the bank. Okay, sir. Okay, and sir, can you please quantify the slippage figure uh, as in uh, the absolute amount, if you can? I think I and gave that 7,200 7, or something I did mention. That, yeah. That's the 50 basis points or 0.5%. Got it. And sir, how much of that would be from restructured? 
uh, I didn't give that, but I can I alluded to that uh, the slippage amount has got uh, it agri and the wholesale one off, uh, which uh, contributed almost to, to little more than 10 basis points. So net of that, it was 0.4 of 38 basis points I alluded to. Uh, the uh, some of them uh, not the agree piece, but the other piece is the part of uh, the restructuring. Got it, sir. So, and my last question, my, uh, uh, question is on this merger dispensation. So, uh, we did see a press release on RBI approving the merger, and it said with terms and conditions. Uh, so, were there any dispensations, and if not, when would one hear about dispensations applied for, and also any clarity on ADFC like stake? Two things you asked. One, one is about the conditions of the dispensation. Uh, the no objection from RBI uh, is on our application. And uh, that the conditions, I think we mentioned somewhere, these, these conditions are, for example, I, I'll give you some nature, right, uh, of some of those things, how you can think about. Uh, when the merger happens, the banking regulations shall apply uh, across all the portfolios and all the business lines. Right? So that's part of, uh, those are the kind of, I'm giving you flavor of uh, some of those conditions. Uh, that, that's, that's one. Uh, and, you know, there are some entities that will merge. And the licenses of those entities that will merge, so they have to be surrendered, right? And then intimated to yeah, So that kind of a, uh, those are uh, some examples. And then uh, when we uh, apply and get approvals from various other authorities, uh, we need to take those approvals to get back to uh, to the regulator with those approvals, right? And when we go to shareholder, whatever is the shareholder resolution, and the approvals to get it back to the uh, to the regulator. So, so you can see that these are some. I'll give you some flavor of how to think about those conditions. But you alluded to what about the dispensation of the glide part of the forbearance. So that's not uh, that's not what it is, right? That's uh, that is something separate, uh, and that is uh, handled uh, 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 as an item uh, different from the application per se. Uh, and we, we continue to continue to work with the regulators on that aspect. Got it. Got it, sir. Sir, my last question is on EBLR repricing. So, basically, your reset for retail and corporate loans will be what? Three months, one month? Uh, three, three months or six months? Uh, mostly, I think, it's three months. Got it, sir. So, that was very, very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maru, for asking me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hardik Shah from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congratulations for a good quarter. Uh, my first question is on the MTM loss. Can you share some color on AFS mix modified duration and under what circumstances one can use the IFR? Okay, uh, Hardik, thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. See, the, the AFS book. Uh, broadly, you can think about it. It's got uh, three components, right? Broadly, three components. Uh, one is the uh, covered bonds. Uh, the other is the uh, participation certificate, primarily uh, priority sector lending participation certificates. And the third one is the uh, government of India securities. Right? These are three broad components which are there. Uh, most of these, uh, the other aspect that you asked about is. Uh, the modified duration and how you think about it. Uh, see, about uh, about two years you can think about it is the is the tenor of the duration, uh, and that's the time it takes to pull this to pass. Right? So it's a, uh, so from that sense uh, we, we expect that in a couple of years they, they drip back right over, over, over this time period. The other aspect of the investment fluctuation reserve and what it means uh, to these things, right? The investment fluctuation reserve is an appropriation of profit to set some reserves up, uh, and we have investment fluctuation reserves which are slightly more than 2%. Right? And at the discretion of the bank, at some point in time, uh, we can utilize it, but we have not chosen to utilize the investment fluctuation reserves, and uh, because it's slightly more than 2%. Right? Uh, we, it has to be, I think, regulatedly 2%, so uh, there's no, no point to the opinion. And given that, 
uh, that uh, this pulls back to power in a couple of years' time, right? Uh, and uh, we're quite uh, uh, not not comfortable to pull down the reserves and use it right now. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you, sir. My second question is on the growth side. Growth on retail has been impressive. So, uh, what are your th th thoughts on it, on, on its sustainability, given given the inflation concerns that you alluded to at the start of the call? Okay, again, another good point. Thank you. See, the, the retail growth, uh, ever since we came back uh, with the credit policy, um, getting back to pre COVID level, if you, if you see over a period of uh, two, three quarters, uh, have been quite good. Uh, the December quarter uh, was close to five, four and a half, five. The March quarter was close to five, similar rate. And uh, the June quarter is 5% sequential, right? So year on year is now crossed the 20% mark, right? the year on year, because of the base, right? Because we kept going down and now we're starting to build up. Sequential momentum is there. Uh, within the within the retail book, if you look at uh, the one that I called out for, uh, the vehicle segment, uh, has been hampered by various supply chain issues, right? Uh, despite that, it did grow well. Uh, we did have uh, quite a good growth, but then if you put that to the side and give more time for that growth, the retail, excluding that vehicle segment, grew by almost 25% year on year. Right? So this again a solid growth. Uh, then the other aspect of uh, how to think about the uh, environment and the growth, right? We, we do see good amount of demand uh, across most of the products uh, from from unsecured product to secured product to mortgage product to home loans and across everywhere we do see that, right? including the gold loan and so on. Uh, I think we published that list of various products and the growth rate, so you can see that it's balanced across. Card loans, let's talk about the credit cards, the last time we want to mention. Uh, the card loans do have a very good spend, uh, I think 24% or so uh, sequential spend increase. Again. Uh, discretionary, uh, if you look at the discretionary spends have gone up even more, right? The most this growth in the card spend is driven a lot by discretion, and it is discretion could you can take it as also seasonal in the summer months or holidays months. A lot of travel, entertainment, hotels, and so on and so forth. They are all coming back to life, and you are seeing pick up huge pick up on that. Uh, the second aspect of the spend is that is the spend translating into loans, right? And which to some extent it is, uh, but to a large extent it still needs to come more, right? It is still not fully there. Hard, uh, from a loan growth point of view, uh, it will take uh, uh, some more time, I think, uh, while, while uh, over prior year, what the prior quarter sequential is 4.4% uh, 4, 4 is the sequential growth rate in uh, payment products. Uh, for it to pick up and go further, uh, we'll have to wait for uh, people to utilize their credit lines fully. Still, the credit line utilization on cars uh, is at, I uh, call it, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the pre code level. So, a lot of credit lines utilization still left to go. Uh, and the liquidity in the hands of the customers is also there, right? We, these customers, from a relationship point of view, uh, about five times our customers have uh, for, for the 80,000 crores of payment balances, payment business balances that we have. Five times that we have liabilities from the similar customer segment. So we do see that uh, people have good amount to, to, uh, of money and uh, line utilization to happen. So we expect that uh, with the pickup that is taking place right now, we need to give some more time for that to do. Uh, similarly, on the revolve rates, you didn't ask, but uh, I'm sure another person will be thinking about asking, so I would look to the same thing. Uh, the revolve rate uh, pickup also has not happened yet, right? Uh, First, the spend that needs to happen, which is happening now. Two, three quarters we are seeing spend happening. Spend translating into loans, slightly picking up, sequential 4.4, right, uh, picking up. Uh, then the next thing is that the line utilization happens, and then comes the revolving, right, uh, to, to come with that. So some, we have a few quarters away before uh, it gets there. Got it. As a follow-up to that, sir, what are your thoughts on the sustainable revolve rate going forward in the industry? It will, as the economy starts to pick up and people spend, uh, which you are beginning to see, discretionary spends you are seeing is happening. Uh, 
uh, once the discretion dispense happens, you will see that the people will uh, get back to uh, the previous. See, over a period of two years, uh, both, uh, both uh, either in our bank or in some other bank, uh, people were, uh, call it uh, for lack of some other word, uh, chronic revolvers. Right? That means habitually revolving for more than six months, nine months out of the 12 months have come down because either uh, they are uh, having a bad score in the bureau or they are having a bad score with us and uh, they are utilized their limits so we are not we are tightened on the limits are not given because we want to be cautious. Uh, so we need to wait for the things to come back and then they will start to spend and the revolve will start. We are quite confident that the customer base that we have and the, uh, the type of spend that they do uh, will get back to the, what we have seen pre-COVID from they spend habits and revolve uh, kind of uh, uh, attitude on that. Got it. Got it. Sir, last question on, on deposit rates. You've been taking the rates higher. So how should we think about this in the next few quarters as uh, how much hike the bank would consider taking and how, how is the competitive intensity uh, increasing on that front? The pricing, we are talking about more the time deposit pricing uh, because the other... Uh, cars, of course, nothing. And the savings account is, uh, has been stable. Uh, the time deposit we have uh, slightly only increased uh, over the last month to two months. Uh, we have not taken it up all the way what has happened. And the way we think about the pricing is there are two elements to it. Right? One, uh, customer uh, are able to get to the right kind of a customer to have the deposit. And, and what is the price sensitivity of the customer uh, to get those volumes in. So, so that, that's always a, a kind of what we do, engaging with the front line who in turn engages with the customer. So we get that intelligence and discuss in Alco to say uh, how uh, we are able to get those volumes at, at what kind of a price point uh, that we can get. And the second aspect of our determination of the price is also competitively pricing. Right? Competitively pricing means uh, looking at certain other banks to see that, you know, we are relevant in the market and we don't want to be price leaders by pricing up anything. Uh, but at the same time, we have to be competitive, right, within within certain range. Uh, that is all. These are a couple of considerations we do and we discuss it in the ALCO as a team uh, and decide how we want to pitch ourselves to the customer. Got it. Got it. Thank you for your time, sir, and congratulations again for, for a good quarter. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, Sini and Tim. Uh, thanks for taking the question. So, firstly, again, just coming on with respect to the RBI's approval. So, any indication with respect to HDB financial? So, when we look at it in terms of the uh, scheme of arrangement, it says it has approved. Uh, so, uh, would we hear further with respect to HDB and HDFC life or it's uh, more or less uh, there within the arrangement scheme, yeah? Okay. Uh, good. Thank you. The, the other question, um, uh, it was asked HDFC life, I didn't address it, I didn't address it with, uh, along with this. Uh, Kunal, on the uh, HDB, first, first the RBA approval is a no objection to the scheme of amalgamation that has been filed, right? The scheme of amalgamation... Uh, it doesn't have a role for HDB there. HDB is a subsidy, existing subsidy of the bank and, and continues to be there. Right? Uh, and so the scheme of amalgamation does not have anything to do with the HDB. And uh, so that's, that is, if anything we need to do, it's a separate conversation, it's a separate process and so on. So it is not combined with the scheme. Uh, we find the scheme and the scheme does not have anything to do with HDB. Uh, HDFC life. Uh, is uh, currently a subsidiary of HTSC Limited, and it is envisaged that on merger uh, that it will be a subsidiary of the bank. Uh, there are two things in this, right? One, uh, in uh, as a, as an RBI regulation, uh, a bank holding uh, life insurance uh, has to be 30% or below or 50% or above. Currently, HTSC life holding is about 47.8 or so. Okay? So there's a, there's a two plus percent. Uh, percentage point increase that is required. And, and that is part of uh, another uh, kind of a regulatory approval that, uh, that we have sought uh, that, that we can go to 50 plus. And uh, whatever the regulator uh, finally tells us, we will have to comply with that. Right? So that's part of 
uh, what we are waiting for, and it's, it's a continuous dialogue that happens to see how we can get to uh, more than 50. Either we get, or SCFC, SCFC Limited will get to uh, 50 plus uh, before consummation of the merger transaction. Uh, so that's on SCFC life. Sure, but uh, there are no timelines in terms of where can we expect. So the process is still on, the communication is still on. That is correct. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, sure. And uh, uh, secondly, in terms of uh, uh, the overall PSL or maybe as we look at in terms of the build-up uh, towards the merger, so a couple of points. One is uh, in terms of the branch expansion, we have been highlighting that 1,500, 2,000 odd branches could be added. Maybe uh, uh, the uh, Q1 was not, uh, uh, maybe we had not seen that much of a branch addition. So uh, when do we expect, is it post like consummation of the merger, do we see that run rate or we will start preparing out, uh, for it from this fiscal and it will be more back-ended? And uh, second related question is on the PSL build-up. So uh, should we say that uh, uh, whatever PSL certificates were bought in FY22 and RIDF investments which have gone up from 9,000 to 45,000 crores, that was maybe with respect to the earlier requirement, and uh, we will start building up further to meet up with the HDFC Limited's uh, merger. How should one uh, see that? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you again for that branch build-up that you asked about. Yes. Uh, th this quarter, the branch build-up was lower, 36 or so, but we have about 250 branches in various stages of uh, getting to getting to be implemented. Uh, we, we are not going to wait. Uh, for for uh, anything, the, the branch buildup uh, is an organic process. Irrespective of any kind of an outcomes, branch buildup is the right thing to do for the bank uh, from a growth point of view. Okay. That is where we are embarked on, and uh, we, we see opportunities. Uh, branch has got, I think we've talked about it again in the past. Branch has got two aspects to it. Right, one, uh, you, you have a branch which develops the brand uh, in the vicinity of where the branch is and draws in customers uh, through brand attraction. The second thing is the branch is a congregation of a sales force. If, we, if you don't have branch, you're going to have a sales office. We can call it that. You're going to open X thousands of sales offices. So we rather open X thousands of sales because the kind of a travel that a sales relationship manager need to do to in their outreach to meet a customer or a prospective customer we want to keep it to one to two kilometers rather than to four, five, or six kilometers. It gets in better productivity and gets in better influence to consummate the transaction. Right? Uh, that's part of what uh, we have envisaged and we do. So we, the branch buildup will happen. Uh, it's not waiting for anything. Uh, it's a question of a process uh, to to get that implemented. Uh, it's in progress to happen. Right. So even in this financial year. Uh, you will see some uh, substantial branch uh, accretion that happens. Uh, the second aspect that you touched upon is the PSL, right? Uh, and you touched upon the RADF on PSL. See, P PSL, are, there, are, there are several strategies to grow PSL. Uh, organic buildup of loans, PSL eligible loans, is the best method to do because it gives fantastic returns. It gives great returns. Uh, going through our credit filters, because of tried and tested credit filters, uh, it, it gives you the best returns that you can, and, and the returns far and far more than the average of the bank. Right? So we, we are quite enthused to do PSL organically to the extent it comes through our credit filters. Uh, in, in the past year, and two, two, two years, when we have had uh, muted retail to some extent, right? The PSL component is also lower because you did not get the retail as much. But as we are now opening up more retail and going, uh, you see that the PSL comes back organically. Still, uh, it's only one of the components because we don't uh, we don't leave other components on the table. We want all of them. For example, organic is one where I think we have said that it is little uh, more than uh, call it um, in uh, 30 to 35 percent or. or uh, uh, it will more than two thirds to 70, 75 percent we get through organic. And then there are other tools that we always use and we want to continue to use them. Uh, one is the uh, ESL certificates, uh, we get that too. The other one is the RIDF, uh, is also something where 
uh, there's always a trade-off that is done, right? Uh, what is the organic that you can build within your credit filters? Uh, and if you go outside of your credit filters, what sort of a credit cost are you going to end up? Uh, and so thereby what returns? What is the cost of the PSLC? What is the cost of RIDF? And so this is always an equation that happens almost uh, in a quarter of few times that you balance this to see where is the break-even and which is the right way to go about. Right? So that is how uh, decisions are done. And when we didn't do retail, we have done uh, more of the other things uh, that will happen. And then when we do more of retail, there will be more of organic that comes in. Right? So that's how you think about the PSL. Sure. So PSLC, what we bought, 1 lakh crore, maybe with HDFC, this, that there is a scope for this to go up uh, substantially from here on because 80,000 has already gone up to 1 lakh last year. And uh, maybe with this requirement, I think there will be more and more uh, uh, maybe purchase of PSLC, which could happen. See, uh, purchase, again, as I told you, these are the three, four elements that happen, right? Uh, PSLC, RADF, organic PSL growth, and we do participation certificates, right? So the several components are happening. And we have to balance the cost versus the returns that each one gives. So there is no one particular target. If you ask me, do you know whether this uh, 1 lakh crores is going to go to X or Y, there is no predetermined formula that we operate. The, the formula is which gives you the best returns. What is the break-even or indifference point between various instruments? That is what drives the decision. And, and that is, as you know, it's a dynamic decision because the price in the market is dynamic. It's not a fixed price. And so that is how that uh, is determined periodically. And then the outcomes is what you are seeing. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of... Adarsh from CLSA, please go ahead. Hi, Shini and team. A um, couple of questions. Um, on the um, expenses side, obviously, um, indicated investment in branches and how we see people ramp up also in various different ways. Um, any sense on um, that? Sorry to interrupt you, uh, Mr. Adarsh. The audio is breaking from your line, sir. Please check. Okay, let me try once, otherwise I'll take it offline. Uh, so just on the cost side, any sense, you know, it clearly is you're in investment mode in branches and employees. So any um, uh, path towards cost income over the next couple of years? Okay. Uh, good, good, Adesh. Thank you for asking. But one, one thing, uh, while we normally desist from giving forward guidance on anything, but let me talk through so you'll get an idea of what previously we have talked and our thought process so you'll you factor that right? One, uh, from a top line point of view, the growth is picking up, right? Uh, you've seen that over a period of time, that the top line growth, the top line means I meant uh, the volume growth was anyway there, uh, but the mix uh, is, is also, we will see last this quarter, and similarly last quarter, the mix is also changing to get that, uh, the top line revenue, interest income or non-interest income growth component also moving up. You're seeing that come up. Right? That, that gives you a little more, uh, kind of a, a confidence and an opportunity to make the right kind of investments that you want because you want to feed that from a growth point of view. That's that's one to a, from a balancing point of view. The second thing that uh, that also goes in our process. The second thing that also goes in our process. Uh, are you there? Yeah, we, we are there, Adesh. We are not able to. Adesh is connected. I'm there. Good Okay, all right, yeah, because suddenly we lost the screen, control screen, that's why I asked, yeah. Okay, the, the second thing is in terms of the credit situation, right? Uh, so we've come after, after a pandemic credit uh, kind of a scenario. Uh, as the credit gets benign, right, which is uh, already you're seeing some benign credit environment. Uh, and uh, when I say credit benign means I meant from a credit cost, right, so benign. Uh, we have, that is part of what you have seen us make those investments, uh, making investments in people uh, when the credit cost, co credit cost has been below what we have seen historically, what we have seen uh, before uh, the COVID. Uh, we have taken the opportunity to make those investments uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, expensive both people technology as well as on branches. Uh, 
so these these are the two considerations, right, that we have always given, right? How to how to make those investments for the future by using the uh, by using the uh, credit uh, benign conditions and how to make you put an opportunity of the uh, top line growth so that you can balance the expenses. Now, coming to the last aspect, which is the crux of what you asked, saying what is the cost to income and how we should think about, right? Uh, if you go back to the pre-COVID, our cost to income has been 39.6. The, the full year before uh, the COVID, 39.6, right? You can call it 39, you can call it 40, right? Uh, we've always said that as the retail picks up, retail is an upfront cost, and and the, uh, the top line comes uh, with a lag, and uh, and comes over a two three year period, right? So you you put the cost in, and it comes over two three year period. That's that's the that's the nature of that retail. Once you want to grow retail, that is that is the way it happens. And you're seeing that pick up. And we have said that oh even through the COVID period when when even when we wanted to spend, we did not have the opportunity to spend. Uh, and we have been saying that we have been waiting for that opportunity to spend to get that retail back up. And now that is uh, chugging along. And uh, so the, the cost to income uh, on an overall basis, call it 40, uh, 40 uh, or so, which is the pre-COVID, uh, quarter to quarter variations will happen. Right? Uh, and, and if you ask Sashi, I think he's told in the past in certain other uh, meetings that quarter to quarter variations can happen because it's a question of a timing. But over a period of a year uh, or two years, if you see, you can touch 40. But over a medium term, three to five years, this is something as a forward guidance normally, which we don't do, but for a cost to income, what we see as an opportunity, we said it will get to the mid-30s, right? And uh, which is what we said pre-COVID, but this COVID has put a halt to that, uh, changing the composition of the product mix as well as our spend mix. And as we get back to normalization and execute, we should get back to that kind of a trajectory over time. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Adarsh. The audio is breaking from your line. On asset quality, X agrees to me. Um, safe to say that things have trended absolutely in the right direction. Yes, yes. yes. Right. So what is the risk that uh, your credit cost income? As of now, it looks like it's most of the segments, uh, it should have the shoots or some force in the future. You talk about the credits, right? You talk about the NPA. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. agree. Yeah. 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 Uh, it has been quite good if you see at an aggregate level, and uh, that is it is not a component of the business as usual, uh, which is extremely benign because it originated with a very tight credit conditions, and it has also got a component of the restructuring. Some of them that uh, who could not. Who, to whom we have given the opportunity to redeem themselves, to to come back to normal life, right? And some of them have taken that opportunity on the restructuring and, and used it to come back to normal life. Some of them who still struggle uh, get into NPA, but combined on a combined basis, you are seeing that it continues to get benign and better. Another one, two quarters, we should see it even more benign. So this is uh, useful. That's it from my side. Thanks for all the questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Murarka from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, uh, Shrini and team, and congratulations for the quarter. Um, so I have two questions: one on NIM and one on OPEX. On NIM, uh, when does the repo hike that happened in May, June, when does it fully translate into yields? Would it be by the end of August or September? And uh, also, if you can share the EBLR repo, non-repo, and the uh, you know, fixed and floating breakup for the loan book, that would be useful. Okay, yeah. Uh, first on the NIN, right? Um, the repricing, uh, the repricing starts, right? It started in May. And uh, there's a cycle, and there's at least a three-month uh, cycle, and some of them are a six-month cycle in terms of uh, what happens. Uh, so that's on the net. And uh, so it is not just that; uh, it, it is also got to do with it, it is also got to do with the, um, the deposit cost. So just the repricing on the on the repo or the feeble just doesn't do it. It's also what happens on the cost of funds. But then. 
uh, we do we do expect that uh, this is the tailwind of the rates going up helps, right? And if you think about the second aspect on the NIM that you asked in terms of the fixed and the variable, uh, about 45% uh, of the book is uh, is fixed and 55% is uh, floating rate, right? Uh, and some of them uh, call it about out of the 55%, 48, uh, which is uh, call it 27, 28% of the total book is uh, repo and uh, a quarter call it about 13, 14% of the total bank book uh, is feeble. Right? So that's the kind of, uh, uh, from a mixed point of view, pricing point of view, you can think that's how it moves on. So just uh, extending that for the NIM uh, outlook, uh, of course, you know, you know that there would be a uh, you know certain amount of uh, up uptake in term deposit rates as well. Uh, so just generally, uh, would we still expect a Retail and CRB proportions to rise in the loan mix and uh, the expansion that you see in the yields sort of outpacing the TD uh, uptick. So, do you do we do we expect these two things to continue for the next let's say three to four quarters? Yeah, yes, from a uh, NIM point of view, it is also rightfully you are focused on the mix because that is what uh, makes it right. Because individually things can go. If the mix don't come, it takes a little more longer time. Uh, the, the mix as we speak now is still at 45.55, right? Although the retail grew at 5% and the wholesale corporate was zero and, and the CRP was uh, 2.7 sequentially, the mix is more or less the same. One quarter doesn't take it. It takes a few quarters uh, for the mix. In. And uh, last quarter we put out the chart in terms of how long it took for the mix to come, retail 55%. How long it took for that retail mix to come to 45, right? And there is a path. Year by year, it showed how long it took, right? So while, while on the way up, it could be faster because the, the rate of growth on the retail and the demand uh, in the macro environment we see on the on the retail is higher. Uh, so it could be faster. Uh, but yes, both uh, the, the inherent demand we see in CRB and in uh, retail is quite good and high. Uh, and, uh, and one other thing I, I, I want to be cautious and tell you too, uh, just because uh, we think uh, we, we, we see good demand, if there is a great demand in wholesale, we are not going to turn down a wholesale loan uh, just because uh, that uh, the NIM has to come up. At the end of the day, what matters in terms of these decisions is, does it give good returns at the end of the day? ROA, ROE, does it provide the right kind of return? If it does, uh, it goes through, right? But from an inherent demand point, because I'm, I'm, I did mention this because March, the same conversation happened, and uh, we saw the wholesale come in uh, with a greater vigor for a growth in March quarter. Uh, and when it came, I was not able to go back to say, by the way, we talked about retail and CRB having a faster growth rate, uh, inherent growth rate, but wholesale has come, so should I decline wholesale? No. So she said, we should go with the, whatever is the demand which is there. We like the customer. We like the credit, right pricing, gives you the return, should go. Uh, and so that is the kind of a decision making that happens. But inherently, retail and CRB are having a good amount of demand. Got it, got it. Thank you. And the other question is on OPEX. So uh, can you share some, you know, uh, th sort of, um, you know, targets on how much you want to hire uh, for the rest of the year? And also, what is your tech spend this quarter as a percentage of overall OPEX? Where is that trending? Okay, yeah, uh, two things. Uh, one, in terms of the uh, hiring, See, there is no predetermined that uh, hiring depends on the productivity. We measure uh, all products, all geographies, uh, branches, non-branches, customer segments in terms of the productivity, which means uh, the, the RM and the sales force uh, to, the, uh, to the customer or to the sales unit. So it depends on the productivity that comes and uh, uh, continuously we drive the productivity up. So we have a model, a best in class model, and uh, we have a best to, uh, and we will periodically look at uh, who and where uh, it is suboptimal and we drive the productivity. So that's part of how we do. Uh, and the people addition, we do as necessary uh, to meet those opportunities when the productivity is uh, saturated, we do need to add to get the more volume. So we're not shy of adding, 
uh, because it brings in better volumes and better relationships. Uh, then your other aspect in terms of the technology, yes, I think in the past we have said the technology spend uh, to total uh, expenses, 8 9% or so, that's, that's a stable over a longer period of time. That's the kind of range in which it operates. So quarter to quarter it can move around, but more broadly that's where it is. So it would be in that 8 to 9% range this quarter as well? A quarter to quarter will be can be different, but broadly that's where it goes, yeah. Okay, okay. Got it, Shini. Thank you. That, that was useful and all the best for the following quarters. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this would be the last question for the day, given the time. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Vaidyanathan for closing comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, President. And thank you, thank you all to all the participants who died in today. Uh, if you still have uh, more questions or need any uh, clarity, clarifications, feel free to get in touch with the investor relations team. Uh, we'll be happy to engage. Uh, thank you. With that, we'll sign off for today. Bye-bye. Thank you.